Hoping everybody had a good day. How far are you going to come up? All the way. Okay. <laughs> Charlie said at the back today, he slept the entire service. I think. <laughs> what name? What name? Sang or nothing? So. Anyway, <laughs> it's uh, it's good to have each of you with us tonight. Glad you're here. Uh, so ask you to mind the Lord tonight. Is there any announcements before we move further? service tonight, uh, so we praying about that. Uh, if nothing else, like I said, it's good to have each of you with us. Right. We're going to ask Brother Brian to come, Brother Brian, Brother Jason Brian to come, <laughs> and uh, kids going to sing one or two, or one, let them sing for a little bit, and uh, it's going to be a good time in the Lord. So, if nothing else, I'm going to ask Brother Ryan Barron to get thanks to the Lord.
thought I knew scared But I'm so filled with fear I can barely move Doubt I found my share of doubt But never more than right now I'm wondering where are you But the God who parts the sea promises he's gonna make a way for me. Oh, this is the truth I'm standing on. Even when all my strength is gone, you are faithful forever. And I I believe you're still good Even when life's not good I will not lose this hope But the God who parts the sea Promises he's gonna make a Appreciate that song, Miss Jayla. She, uh, so I believe you're good. I believe he's still good, even when life's not good. Amen. Ain't that good? Right. A little later, she said, I will not be shaken in that course, what it says. I, I've Amen. always loved the verse in Psalm 16, 8. David writing this, and he says, I've set the Lord always before me, and because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Because he's at my right hand. I think a lot of us would be shaking a whole lot less in life if we'd set God before us. Amen. Have him ready Amen. at our right hand. Uh, I, I love that verse. I appreciate that song. Uh, John chapter 4. Tonight, 
John chapter 4, while you're turning there, I wonder if anybody's got a testimony tonight. John chapter 4, appreciate all those kiddos singing. Make you fishers of man. Was it Kelly's Chapel, youth pastor over there? Um, John Lyle's music director and his two boys that always sing it. I hope I wish they'd sing it every Sunday. I'd go in there and say, man, I hope they sing that song. They uh, they sung and I, I love that song. I appreciate appreciate them learning that. And that's impressive to, to practice one night and be able to do that. So. Amen. Appreciate that singing. If there's not a word tonight, um, if, I want to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. We'll read a few verses, but we're going to look at several. John chapter 4, going to read the first uh, five verses, and we'll go from there. Preaching on a subject tonight, kind of been on my mind, uh, don't bypass Samaria. Don't bypass Samaria. John chapter 4, verse 1, if you have that, say amen. amen. The Bible says, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. And then cometh he to the city, or to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you again for this day. Father God, we thank you for the time, God, that we had in your house this morning and the truths that we, uh, that we learned and seen. Father, we thank you for the life that was rededicated to you, Father God. And God, we pray for him. Lift him up to you, God, asking you to touch and bless him. Father God, we pray tonight as we open up your word, God, uh, that you'd, you'd show us something out of your word tonight. God, I pray you would decrease me. God, get me out of the way and increase your Holy Spirit. God, I, I just pray that you would just help us tonight to understand it and apply it to our lives, Father. We thank you for each thing that's been said uh, and done tonight, Father. We thank you for the singing. Thank you for these children. And God, I just pray that you would just be honored and glorified in this service, Father God. And uh, we'll just give you all the praise. Father, again, we thank you for all that you've done. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name that I pray. And all God's children say, Amen. 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 John chapter 4, very familiar passage of scripture. You know the story about Jesus going to Samaria and a lady at the well, a Samaritan lady, and we may get into that a little bit later, and we may not. Mainly what I want to uh, focus on tonight is, is Jesus going to Samaria. Going to Samaria. You see, the Jews and the Samari uh, Samaritans did not like each other. The Samaritans were half-breeds. Uh, it happened way back in the book of Numbers, I believe. You can go check that out. And learn how that, all that happened. We ain't going to take the time to do that. But they, they were half-breeds. The, the Samaritan bunch was. And, and the purebred Jews, if you will, they didn't like them. They thought that, that they shouldn't have the same uh, uh, abilities. Yes, classifications. They, saw, they thought they, just, that, that they were just below them. Okay? Uh, that, that's just how they kind of thought. They were, I guess, racist, if you want to put it that way. They just, they just didn't like them. To the point... To the point that they would travel around Samaria. The Bible says that Jesus had been in Judea and he's going to Galilee. Well, if you look up how they used to travel, they were, they were travel routes and the travel routes went around Samaria. So they wouldn't even have to go through there and, uh, and talk to them. They wouldn't have to go through there and have any dealings with them. They wouldn't have to spend their tax dollars there. I remember growing up at Crossville, now we're not, uh, anybody from Gerald ain't in here before I go any further. <laughs> because I did that one Sunday and uh, after service, the lady told me she was from Geraldine. Uh, I love Geraldine, Geraldine's fine, I just don't like purple, I'll just put it that way, okay. But, but that was our rival growing up in high school and uh, we just, uh, kind of like Fife and Plainview type deal, just, that was just our rival. We didn't like them, I, I hope they didn't win, they hoped we didn't win. That's kind of like Alabama, boy, I was pulling for, I don't like Jimbo, but I was pulling for him last night, you know, but just kidding, take it easy, it's okay. But we, we always had a joke going through, me and my father-in-law, my father-in-law, he's a real competitive and sports guy, and he'd always ask 
we wanted something from Jax. He came to the house. He said, I'll go to Fife. I ain't spending my tax dollars in Geraldine. Like he was, he was just anti-Geraldine. That was, it was just a running joke. Nobody gets your feelings hurt, okay? It's, it's just a joke. But uh, that's kind of really how they felt. They could not stand the Samaritans. They would bypass it. They would go to the west. They would go to the east. But they did not want to have any dealings with the Samaritans. That's, that's just how it was. But the Bible tells us in this passage that Jesus was traveling from Judea to Galilee. And the Bible says, it's about verse number 4, Charlie, that it says that he must needs go to Samaria. He must needs go to Samaria. We talked about this morning uh, that it was how, how uh, Zacchaeus coming down and having a meal with Jesus and going into his house, that wasn't an option. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything like that. It was, it was now or never, right? Uh, it's kind of the same deal right here. He said, I must needs go. It wasn't an option. I'm going through Samaria. Why? Y'all know the story right here. There was a lady there that needed Jesus. There was actually a whole city there that needed Jesus, and Jesus knew there that, and he went. But the problem was he had 12 dudes tagging along with him. They couldn't stand them, and they questioned everything he did. They didn't like who they was. They didn't like how they were, and that's just how it was. And I think the, the problem that the 12 disciples had is the same problem that we have today, is that we hold on to bitterness, and we hold on to hatred, and we hold on to, to uh, uh, grudges, and we, we hold all kinds of stuff against people, people that need Jesus even, and we have no dealings with them. And when it comes to trying to witness to them or friend them or, or, or to show them the love of Christ, we bypass Samaria and stay it and go on to somebody else. But I think somebody has been on my mind for some reason, somebody needs to hear it tonight, that you need to quit bypassing Samaria. You need to quit bypassing Samaria because there's people that you know that maybe you've, you've defriended or whatever or, or for whatever circumstance that need Jesus. And they may need you to show them the love of Christ. If we're holding grudge, I'm going to tell you some of the most grudge-holding people in the world fill pews every Sunday. Some of the most bitter people sometimes fill church pews every Sunday. Why is that? Why, why are we like that as the body of Christ? We're not to be. We're to love on those people. And so I want to encourage you to not to quit bypassing Samaria. Quit bypassing Samaria. Maybe somebody you, you, you work with. Maybe a family member. There's been things happening in my family, uh, especially on, on my dad's side. There was my, my grandpa passed away, my granddaddy. He was my best friend in the entire world. And I loved him. And uh, But when he passed away... Uh, Man, things went haywire. And there's grudges and there's bitterness that's still held today. And there's side, on that side of the family, there's still people that won't communicate with those people because there's bitterness there. I'm going to tell you something. Bitterness is, is not good. Amen. Bitterness is not good. Holding a grudge, I'm going to tell you something. If you're holding a grudge tonight, if you're bitter to somebody, I'll tell you how the Bible says how we're to be about this. We need to go to that person. We need to make it right. I'd hate to go to my grave knowing that somebody was mad and was bitter at me or I was bitter at somebody. Now, some of them things is hard to forgive and hard to move on from. Let's just be honest. It's tough. It's tough. But bitterness is bad. Grudge holding is bad. We got to show the love of Christ to those that's even hard to show the love of Christ to, whether it be family, whether it be friends. The Bible said that Jesus said, he must needs go to Samaria. Verse 5 says he came to Samaria, which is a, a city there. It was called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. It's about 12 o'clock. They started at 6 a.m. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples were going away to the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew asketh drink of me, which is a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So this lady brings it to his attention. You're not even supposed to like me. Why are you asking me for a drink? His disciples done gone to town. And they, they mad they haven't spent tax dollars in Samaria to buy a loaf of bread and some beanie wings. You know what I mean? And, and so they're gone. Jesus goes to the well, and he tells this lady to give me a drink. Conversation started. Give me a drink. The lady says, I don't know. I don't know why you're asking me this. 
Jesus said to her this, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith thee, Give to me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would give you living water. He would give you living water. Jesus said, this ain't your average Joe Jew you're talking to here, Samaritan lady. You don't know who you're talking to. I'm the God that created you. I'm the God, I'm the God of Jacob. This, this whale that y'all are so obsessed with, I'm the God of Jacob. So I give you living water. Woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence thou hast thy living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well, and drank therefore himself and his children and his cattle. This is the point of the story where it's a good thing that Brother Nick's not Jesus. Okay? Because when she had said, are you greater than Jacob, I'd have probably went on. But he didn't. Are you greater than Jacob? Listen to what he says. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. We've talked about this a million times, but I want to remind you one more time that there's things in this world that's not going to fill the void that's in your heart. They ain't enough money, they ain't enough alcohol, they ain't enough drugs, they ain't enough things, they ain't enough cars, they ain't enough house. They ain't enough to fill the void that Jesus will fill in your life. Amen. Every who drinks of this junk is going to thirst again. It might have been the best well in Samaria. They thought they had it going on. And I'm gonna tell you, let me tell you why she's there at 12 o'clock in the middle of the day. Because there ain't nobody else there in the middle of the day. She was embarrassed about the life she had lived. She didn't have a real good reputation. And she's there and she's thirsty and she's weary, trying to get something that'll fill her thirst and desire on the inside. And Jesus said, Jesus read her like a book. And he said, let me tell you something. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock, you're going to be here again. You're still going to have the same thirst. You're still going to have the same void. You're still going to have the same emptiness. But by George, I give you living water and you can be filled. Amen. And you can live a transformed and a different life. He said, I must needs go to Samaria. He knew who was there that needed help. And I can't stress this enough. There are those that maybe we've had wrong dealings with in the past. You need to make it right because they need Jesus. They need them. And I'm going to tell you something. Lost person probably ain't going to come to us and make things right. That's not in their DNA. You see, we've got a different DNA running through our bones now. I got a different blood running through me. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. He's got new desires. He's supposed to have a new heart and a new mind. We need to make things right. Quit bypassing Samaria. He goes to this lady. Whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It's a well that never runs dry. It's a well that never runs dry. It'll take you all the way to eternity, is what Jesus said. The lady, I'm sure she's still confused. Don't know what's going on. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, and neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, See, Jesus said unto her this, Go call thy husband and come hither. Go call thy husband. This lady wanted salvation without repenting of her sin. She wanted this living water without getting the things in her life out that needed to be out. I think a lot of us in here tonight, we want Jesus to be Savior of our life, but we don't want Him as Lord of our life. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. You can't have Him as Savior and not have Him as Lord. Amen. He's both. He's both. Amen. He said, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have had no husband. Uh, for thou hast had five husbands, in whom thou... Uh, hast is not thy husband, and that uh, saidest thou truly. The woman's, woman said unto her, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. When Jesus said that, read her like a book, she said, There's something different about this guy right here. He's a prophet or a magician or something. I don't know what he's got going on. He said, But he's different. He's different. I, I assume you're a prophet. She said, verse 20, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe the hour, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know, you worship, ye not, you, you know not what we know, what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, and the Father seeketh such to, to worship him. 
I'm glad today, back in that day, they thought they had to go to the temple and they thought they had to be at a certain place, and, and they did. The temple was the presence of God in that place, right? But I'm glad today that I can have a worship service at my house. I can have a worship service on my tractor. I can have a worship service in my truck. I can come here and have a worship service because the true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. And I've got the Holy Spirit of God running through me, whether I'm at home or I'm at the ball field or I'm at this church. It don't matter. We can worship wherever we're at. I about feel like preaching tonight, John. Hey, with spirit and in truth. Are you worshiping God in spirit and in truth? Are you worshiping because it's a desire deep on the inside of you? Or are you worshiping because you, you think that you're obligated to? Amen. What is Amen. it? Sometimes it ain't as easy to worship as other times. I get that. Sometimes we come in here and we're broken and we've had a bad week and things just ain't going our way. We may have health problems and financial problems. and mar we got all kinds of issues. And sometimes it's harder to worship than other times. But we should always have a desire to lift God's name up Amen. in spirit Amen. and in truth Amen. with a pure heart and a pure conscience. You worship, you know not what. We worship we know what we worship. Verse 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. And when he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I speak unto thee, or he who speaks unto thee is he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked to the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? Jesus tells this lady right here, he makes himself known who he is to this woman. He said, I am the Christ. I am the Messiah. And here comes the 12 bozos back from getting beanie weenies at Samaria. And here they are. And they look at him and say, Why is he talking to her? Kind of the same thing we talked about this morning about all those uh, religious folks murmuring about Jesus having a conversation with Zacchaeus. Kind of the same deal going on here. I'm going to tell you something. We ain't talking to sinners. Then what, I mean, what do we do? If we're not sharing the love of Christ, if we're not living Christ out in front, it, it like, acted like it blowed their mind that he was witnessing to this lady, trying to win her to the Lord. Don't be those kind of people. I tell you what, be the one that stands out. Be the one that stands out. The woman then left her water pot and went into her city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Christ? And they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed to him, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought, hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are four months, and that he cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And they reapeth the wages, and he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is the saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap. Uh, that were on you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into the laborers. So he gives them a lesson right here about going and about planting and about reaping and about sowing and doing all of these things. They're, 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 they're wondering what Jesus is doing, why he's doing all this. He said, that, he said, the meat, the things that I desire in my life is to do the will of my Father. That's what makes me feel fulfilled. You all hear what he said earlier in that verse? That's what makes me feel fulfilled is to do the will of my Father. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you the tiredest that I am throughout the week. I'm going to be honest with you. The tiredest I am throughout the week is when I walk out of here on Sunday night. I'm just beat, and I'm wore out. Me and Jacob, Bo, we, we, we laid down there back there the other night on the back and said, oh, God, it's awful to be a preacher. You know, I'm give out. But I'm going to tell you something. When I get home and I lay down in my bed, there's a peace that I've got over me, knowing that I'm doing what God's called me to do. Sometimes it stinks. I'm just going to be honest with you. Pastoring's not easy, and it's not fun. But I'm going to tell you something. There, there, there's, a, there's a desire in there. I, there. I've wanted to quit a bunch of times, but there's a desire in my heart to do what God has called me to do. Amen. 
And I hope you've got the desire and I hope that gives you fulfillment. I hope you have contentment in your heart doing what God has called you to do. Jesus said, that's where I find my fulfillment. That's what drives me. That's what fuels me is to know that I'm doing what God's called me to do. What about you? What's God called you to do? Where's God called you to go? Is it through Samaria? Maybe somewhere you don't want to go? Maybe somewhere where, the, where, where it's rough and things ain't going to be easy? I'm going to tell you something. You do what God's called you to do. There'll be something inside of you that, man, it just, it just does something. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Verse 39. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And he said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus said in verse 4, I must needs go to Samaria. I must needs go. Why did he need to go? Because the whole town got saved. There was people waiting there. That their, their hearts were ready to receive the gospel, and they received the gospel. I want to tell you something. God may be calling you to go somewhere tonight. He may be calling you to, to make a phone call when we leave here to a friend. It may be out of the will of God. It may be a co-worker. It may be somebody at school. I don't know. But when God says you must go, you must go because he's going to take you, and he's going to see you through. He's going to see you through. So I don't know who this for tonight may be for me tonight. I'm going to tell you this. Don't bypass Samaria. Don't bypass Samaria. I'm going to ask you if you would to stand.